Hello anybody, I'm Don Pollock and welcome to the History of My World where we take a look at some of the fun stories and memorable moments I've shared with you in the evening news and a little bit of the story behind the story. In this case, it was one of my favorite stories, but it almost never made it on the air, ever. And it wasn't because of reasons you might think, but because of circumstances that were completely beyond my control. It was very frustrating. It all started out, innocently enough, I was going to do a story on a a church in Media, Pennsylvania that was conducting a very imaginative and creative springtime fundraiser. Take a look. Traditionally, the Catholic Church has depended on bake sales, carnivals, and the ever-reliable collection basket to raise funds. But here in Media, parishioners for Nativity BVM are compelled to provide financial support for their parish by a means that's far more effective than the threat of eternal damnation, namely the threat of infernal ornamentation, a fundraising tactic that involves, shall we say, an unexpected visitation from a host of winged messengers who bring anything but angelic tidings to your home decor. We try to make our yard look nice, and now we have flocking flamingos in our front yard. We were warned about this. For three weeks, the parish bulletin did say that spring was coming, and so are the birds. We didn't know where they came from. I don't know what I'm going to do. We tried to warn them for their own good that it's best not to touch the birds until the trained handlers come and get them. They will, for a fee of $25, come and gather the birds from your property. We'll do what we gotta do. The $25 contribution to the removal crew making its way directly into the church coffers, an operation that could only have been authorized from the highest levels of the parish family, with the blessing of its leader, a man of God, Father Francis Giliberti, Monsignor of Nativity BVM, who understood it was an offer his parishioners couldn't refuse. Parishioners here are great people generous, thoughtful, kind, and we're just giving them the opportunity to continue to show that goodness, that kindness, that interest in their parish community. And we know that they will. We have uh, 1,700 parish families in Nativity. And except for seniors and hardship cases, any one of them could end up sleeping with the birdies after a middle of the night visit from a hit squad of hired flamingo goons. Every person that's been flocked, they want to flock other people. This is a very fun fundraiser, and people really seem to enjoy it. You can purchase an insurance for $15 and you will not be flopped. The insurance is the greatest part of this. They're protected right down the line. While still doing their part to support a church that brings whole new meaning to keeping watch over its flock. In media, I'm Don Pollock, Channel 6 Action News. Fun, right? You know, a little bit irreverent, but uh, everybody had a good time helping us out. And, and how about that Monsignor? I mean, you know, Marlon Brando would have never gotten that role in The Godfather if this guy had auditioned. Wow. Anyway, everybody thought, everybody enjoyed it, and, and it was all ready to go on the air. It was scheduled for the 6 o'clock news. And what story should break that day? The church pedophile scandal. I mean, it was all over every newscast everywhere. So we couldn't run my, you know, church fundraiser story because you, you can't have you can't have a newscast dominated by, you know, hundreds of abuse victims, you know, children going back ten years, and you know, priests being switched from parish to parish, and you know, covering up, and you know, the diocese knew about it. And now for the lighter side of the Catholic Church, here's Don Pollock with it. You know, you can't run. That's my story. Story on a on a newscast like that, so we have to put it on the shelf, obviously, and and wait until the scandal story was a little less dominant. Well, who knew it was going to be the most dominant story of the next seven years? I mean, every day it was getting worse. And you know, of course, during this time, I'm I'm running other stories, but the church fundraiser story, you know, we have to keep that on the shelf. You know, one week, two weeks three weeks and it's getting stale because it's a spring fundraiser and we're sort of running out of spring, you know, but the story just kept making headlines for, for three weeks. Finally, after about four weeks, one of our producers, Dave Prohaska, noticed that uh, uh, he was producing the 11 o'clock news and, and on that particular day there were no new horrifying revelations uh, coming out in the scandal. So there were no stories about that in the 11 o'clock news. It was just the usual, you know, murders, arson, and political corruption and things like that. So he said, you know, this might be, this might be the one day we might be able to sneak this story on. So that's what we did. We snuck it on just, you know, just before sports. We ran it, no promotion, no teases, just, just let it sit. 
I don't know how it went over because, you know, the subject was such a hot potato to begin with, just the Catholic Church, and so, but we just, so, it just sort of made it on the air like that. Anyway, now you get a chance to see it the way, the way it should have been seen, you know, enjoy it and, and a, a fun story, but uh, back then, I don't know. In any case, uh, share it as, with as many people as you think might enjoy <laughs> seeing this particular story, and you can watch it on my YouTube channel, Don Pollock's World. TV, this, and many other stories from the history of my world, uh, many of them not quite as fraught with controversy as this one. I'll be back next week with another look at the history of my world. I'm Don Pollock, and I'll see you then.